Welcome to Art Ed Radio, the podcast for art teachers. This show is produced by the Art of Education, and I'm your host, Tim Mogan. Now, as we are starting the new school year here, we're doing a lot of episodes about the new year and how to start the new year right. And I think that that's important because, you know, right now is the time for inspiration. Like, you are excited to get back to school. Or most of you are excited to get back to school. Uh, kids are generally excited to be there, or at least excited to be in your class. And they're ready to get going. They're ready to be inspired. And they're ready to start working. And inspiration can come from a lot of different places. But for me, a lot of times... I like to draw inspiration from art history. And this idea kind of came about, you know, the idea for this discussion, this podcast, because Abby posted recently on Facebook about artists that are new to you, like artists that maybe other people have discovered, maybe they're already popular, but you're just discovering, or ones that you're just learning to love. And I absolutely adore that idea because I I love seeing people finding new artists, new work, and new methods of inspiration. You know, it's just, it's fascinating to see what people come up with, you know, who they're learning about, and most importantly, you know, how they are using those artists in the classroom. So Abby and I are going to talk about that today, and, you know, I hope that our discussion is able to do that for you, maybe introduce you to a new artist or two, give you some ideas for the classroom, how to use these artists and use their ideas to to help inspire your students. But before we start the discussion, uh, I want to tell you about the Winter Art Ed Now conference. And I know it's weird to be talking about winter and something that's happening in February because it is August and we're just starting the school year. But I need to tell you about it because Thursday, uh, the 31st, is actually the last day that you can sign up for $99. You know, and I am excited because uh, we've announced a few presentations already. We have Jonathan Jurovich. He's a national Teacher of the Year finalist. He was on the podcast here, and he's going to be presenting on empathy and building relationships. Don Massey, who is at just about every conference and does an amazing job, is going to be presenting with Chalk Pastels. We're going to have presentations on brain breaks and street art and making community connections. And there's just so much more coming. I'm working behind the scenes right now on getting presenters for STEAM ideas and sculpture projects and ceramics and analyzing art with your kids. Just so many great ideas. And as always, we're trying to find some great presenters as well. So again, uh, just till the end of this week, uh, you can go to artednow.com and get the low price of just $99 for the conference. All right. uh, Abby is staring at me waiting for her turn to talk. So uh, let's go ahead and bring her on now. Okay, Abby Shukai is joining me now. Abby, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you, Tim? I am doing great. I am excited to talk about artists and inspiration. But before we dive in, uh, I want to ask you, you know, you started out this school year with all kinds of different artworks that are bringing kind of the the power of positivity into your classroom, um, the hashtag be kind thing that's going on all around our city of Omaha. But uh, if I can just ask you, like, why do you think these ideas are so important? Well, um, so you mentioned this hashtag be kind thing. So just a little background information for listeners. Um my school district has adopted this, um, philosophy for the last few years. And, um, it's just kind of become an initiative where we, I have a conversation with my students and our, one of the things we always say is we just talk about being kind to one another. And so that's really influenced a lot of my thinking and ways that I introduce some things to my students. So starting off the school year, I definitely, um, used a lot of this positive kindness in the art room because that's one the art room is one of the best places that you can do that in and um I did write an article about one of the projects that I did that was a tie-in with street art and stencil design and just simply using spray chalk to go around and 
create positive messages um, around the school campus. And so that was something that really had a great response. And I always talk with my students about what what makes you feel better when you're having a bad day. Mm -hmm. Um, And I always challenge my students to, as they exit my classroom, is to talk to someone different or go out of your way to do something that maybe you wouldn't do just to be kind to one another. And I think in our day and age of schools, it's really hard. It's, it's hard to be a teacher sometimes when um, we have students with mental health issues and we don't know how to handle those things. And by bringing positivity and this philosophy of kindness into the classroom um, and through making art, hopefully it can make a little bit of a difference. Yeah, I think that's really well said. And as much as I'd like to be able to do that all the time, right? sometimes we need to just kind of find art, artists that inspire us, you know, in other ways too, not necessarily for these huge, you know, important ideas. And, you know, I wish we could do that all the time, but sometimes we're just, we're just teaching art as well. So I also want to talk about artists that just kind of inspire us in, in other ways. And so we've each put together uh, a little bit of a list uh, of some of our favorite artists that either inspire us or more importantly, inspire our kids in different ways. And so if we can just go through those uh, and kind of share who we like and why we like them, can I go first? Yeah, uh, sure. Gloria? Sure. Tim. Sure? Okay. <laughs> I mean, it is my podcast after all. Sure, I guess it's so. all about you. Fine. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I wanted to just do one that my kids are always fascinated by op art and optical illusions. So artist number one for me is Bridget Riley. Like she does just amazing stuff with, you know, uh, black and white artwork. She does do some color stuff too, but her black and white stuff is amazing. And just talking about optical illusions and visual perception. And if you really want to get into like the science between behind all of that, uh, she is an awesome artist for all things op art uh, and really introducing that to to your kids. Um, I also like Yakov Agam when it comes to op art, but uh, Bridget Riley is definitely my go-to there. So do you like Bridget Riley? Do you teach optical I illusions? I do. You know, I teach a lot of optical illusions in my digital art classes, yeah. which is super fun. Um I do, you know, maybe when I taught elementary school, I did it a little bit more, but it just takes a lot of time for students to construct things. So um, I've been kind of doing it more in my digital art classes, which have been pretty fun. The last one that we did was like, we did the, an optical illusion where it looks, they design it, but then we actually printed it out and like set it along like in on tables and stuff and it looks like a hole yeah for real so um those are kind of the ways that i like to incorporate it a little bit okay cool now uh who's artist number one for you okay so artist number one is Kristen farr who is a contemporary artist who focuses a lot on well her work is inspired by pennsylvania um dutch folk art Okay. Um, and so, like, that you, doesn't sound very exciting. No, it doesn't. So, like, when you're talking about, um, I always show my students, you know, like barn quilts, right? Okay. Right. So, like, that's kind of what it what it comes from. But her work is inspired by that. But it's like not like that. Yeah. But it is very geometric with design, and so it's a really great way to introduce the ruler to your students <laughs> because yeah. if they don't use the ruler their design is going to be totally off. And even Mm -hmm. with my eighth grade students, they just don't know how to measure things. And so it's a really good way to get them thinking about symmetry, design, um, using math concepts. I I mean, there is actually a lot of geometry when I talk about uh, Kristen Farr, but her work is so colorful. And um, I know that we might have, you know, do we make color wheels in the classroom? Do we not? I'm not sure, but I do know that color mixing is really important Mm -hmm. and she's a really great artist to incorporate, um, color theory, color mixing. A lot of her color designs are made in such a way that they are just so brilliant. And the real, she focuses a lot on the relationships of colors. So, um, it's super cool that way. And it's a kind of a more modern way. It's 2018, you know, <laughs> 2018 way of 
creating a color wheel, if you will. So that's a super good one if you are looking for an exciting way to teach color. Yeah, and I think that kind of goes to the whole point that I always talk. I mean, you know how much I hate perspective drawing and how much I hate color wheels. Um, But I think the whole point that I'm trying to get at is that there are better ways to do things. And Kristen Farr is a great example of a better way to do that. Because like you said, you know, it's not a traditional boring color wheel where you fill in 12 different circles like you have this dynamic exciting way to show how colors mix how colors blend how they relate to each other and i think that's just a much better way to teach them um but moving on to my next artist somebody that um kind of got me thinking when you were talking about precision and repetition uh and things like that with Kristen's work is tara donovan um i don't know if you know her or not but yeah a little bit yeah she creates these amazing sculptures and um, basically she'll take just everyday objects you know styrofoam cups or drinking straws or toothpicks or scotch tape uh, and actually make these giant uh, installations just using you know hundreds or thousands of these materials she actually has one that used one million index cards oh my gosh and so she turns them into these like really intense really repetitive sculptures but they almost turn into these like organic organic materials like this organic subject matter and so anytime that i'm talking to kids about repetition particularly when we're teaching sculpture i uh, you know i love showing her work and like i said it's, it's really interesting because it is just like these boring everyday materials but then she absolutely transforms them into these giant room-sized sculptures that yeah just really kind of kind of blow my mind i mean they're really intense and i really really enjoy them what about you? Do you have any sculptors that uh, that kind of interest yeah, you? Yeah, I do. So kind of going along the same lines of those everyday objects, um, I love the work by Tom Friedman. Um, he his, he's, you know, mostly works with sculpture. Um, but one of the things that I really like about using him in the classroom is that he does a lot of conceptual art, which is mm-hmm. can be really difficult for students to understand. Um, but I think he does a good job. His work is um, he does a good job of kind of allowing students to understand that a little bit. And, you know, I've talked about conceptual art with my eighth grade students before, and they're just like, uh, what? <laughs> like, what yeah. did you just say to me? But um, let me give you an example. So he's using those everyday found objects. Um, a lot of his series, I mean, his later work or his past work. Um, There was one of them that's like, okay, this was, it's a sculpture of cardboard boxes, like cereal boxes and just like things that he would eat. And they were all just the corners of the boxes over a year's time. And so it was kind of showing, you know, this is, this is, this is all of the products or this is what I have eaten or whatever over a Mm -hmm. year's time. Um, So it's kind of a different way to, a lot of his work is kind of focusing on just being reflective on you as a person, you know, environmentally conscious. But a lot of the time he incorporates a lot of childlike humor into his work, which is super relatable to students and they actually can grasp it and understand it. And, you know, one of my students' favorite sculptures is the giant hamburger made of styrofoam. Um, But he's just a really good one that I think does not, it's a good way to introduce conceptual art because it, doesn't go over your student's head, but it can be really fun and enjoyable and can really get students to reflect and um, give them a frame of reference for maybe diving deeper into some of their own work. Yeah, I think that's really well said. And I I love him because, you know, he's whimsical, but then like you said, you know, he has so many deeper ideas. And so it is. It's approachable. It's easy for kids to understand, but then it works as kind of a gateway into talking about some of those deeper subjects, some of those bigger ideas that that we're kind of getting at. Now, my next artist that I wanted to talk about is Remedios Faro. And not very many people know her. She is Yeah, a... I don't know her. Okay, well, you need to look her up. I'm Googling it right now. <laughs> okay. But uh, she is an amazing surrealist. Uh, and, you know, I I love to show her because, you know, like you can only talk about Salvador Dali for so long. You can only show so many Rene Magritte bowler hat paintings. Uh, and, like, her stuff uh, is 
really, really intense. Like it's very, very dreamlike. Um, but also has all of these tie-ins to nature, to the natural world, but with this like mystical, like almost eerie sort of feeling to mm-hmm. it. And so I don't know. I just, I think of it as being like these atmospheric type paintings that are just very different, um, than the really in your face stuff of like Dolly. And so I, yeah. Okay. So I just, did yeah. A quick what, what, Google what's search. the first impression? When there's you're so like so interesting. Like I can't, like you click on one and I can't <laughs> look at it because there's so much stuff going on, but it kind of reminds me of like, Surrealism meets fairy tale meets Renaissance. That's like, <laughs> a good example. Yeah, no, that's I don't a really know. Good There's lots of architecture in there, windows. Yeah, but a very like soft painterly style with most of her stuff. Even if it is like this strange creature like eating breakfast at a table. Like, it's yeah, I still... feel like this could be the book cover for Canterbury Tales. <laughs> maybe. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I like that. Cool. <laughs> All right, uh, who's next on your list? So my next one is CJ Hendry, and she is an Australian uh, contemporary artist who um, is focuses on drawing. Just She uses a lot of colored pencils, and some of her uh, past work is done with just ink on paper. But one of the reasons why I was really drawn to her work is because we've talked about this before on the podcast, but I hate teaching drawing yes um but her work she's so very hyper realistic Mm -hmm. um and so kids see it and you know they're like that's not a photo and you're like no you can learn to draw like that too but they're all relatable objects too um you know like lego men and things like that but one of her my favorite things um that i've come across so she recently did this um exhibit that's called monochrome Mm-hmm. that is just, you know, monochromatic color. So she would have these different rooms where it was like an all yellow room, an all blue room. And in each side of those rooms, all the objects inside of that were the matching color. But then her drawings on the wall, and these drawings are massive. They're huge. She had these crumpled up um, like Pantone chips, um, cards, and just had the drawings of the Pantones that match the color of the room. Oh, nice. um, but the drawings are incredible. And so one of the th- ways that I've been using her work in my classroom is she has this other series where she would look at um, just like paint on a palette and just like the glop of p- the, p- the glop of paint paint, excuse me. And she would have. Um, so what I've been having students do is we've been mixing together like this pretty swatch of paint. So it's like goopy, there's texture, and then we take a photo of it. And then students then use that photo. And we do a little series where they're first just looking at value, um, uh, just using regular drawing pencils. And then eventually we go into colored pencils. But it's just a really small way to teach um to teach those drawing concepts of value in a more interesting way. And students are super into it because they can really see how the colors are mixing together, which makes sense when you're teaching colored pencils. And so it's kind of discovering her as an artist has kind of made me hate teaching drawing less. Okay. I thought you were going to say even more. (laughs) No, less. Because I feel like... I feel like I'm on to something here. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I'm just looking up her stuff for the first time, like you just did with uh, Remedio Svaro. And First reactions? Uh, it's amazing. I love her stuff. Uh, it reminds me a lot of two of my favorite artists that I use for drawing, Kent Bellows and Robert Longo. Like Both of those guys do these hyper-realistic drawings, and she's kind of in that same vein, but uh, she takes it a little further, and I love these huge paint swatches that that she has drawn because it really did like when you first look at it and I thought it was just giant globs of paint on the wall which is cool but then you see her like you know it's actually an eight foot drawing of a paint swatch and it's really really interesting so I'm kind of fascinated and I kind of want to look her up more which hopefully I, I guess is the point here we'll put links on the page for you guys so you can check out all of these artists and maybe even bring some ideas into your classroom and hate drawing a little bit less. Yeah, that's the goal. (laughs) All right, cool. Thank you, Abby. 
Okay, we will post links to all of these artists that we talked about today and their websites or Instagrams or whatever accounts where uh, you can discover them and see what their work is all about. You know, I think it's a lot of fun to share the people and the artists that we love. You know, I just introduced Abby to Romedio Svaro, and she introduced me to CJ Henry, and immediately for both of us, the wheels start turning. You know, you start thinking about, you know, how are kids going to respond to this? How can I use this in my lessons? How can I use this to to show kids what's out there and inspire them? And I think that's a wonderful thing. So check out these artists, and if you're so inclined, maybe listen to some old episodes where Andrew and I are introducing different artists and talking about how we bring their work into the classroom. Uh, so hopefully we uh, have gotten your wheels turning as well, and hopefully you're going to be looking up some of these artists and thinking about how to bring them into your classroom. You know, it's the beginning of the year. It is a great time for you to be inspired and a perfect time to inspire your kids as well. Art Ed Radio is produced by the Art of Education with audio engineering from Michael Crocker. Thank you for listening, as always. Uh, go sign up for the Winter Conference. Uh, website is artednow.com, because you have exactly two more days to get that $99 price. I promise you it will be worth it, so go sign up, and we will see you for the conference on February 2nd. We'll talk to you next week.